Well, uh, I'm Damia Serra Costier. I'm the director of En La Zotea, uh, which is a Spanish short film uh, here in the Berlinale, in the Generation K Plus program. And it's about uh, a group of boys uh, who clean bouts a uh, roof for spying a girl who stands by naked uh, in the roof in the next building. Uh, but there is a boy inside this group who don't like this girl, but she, uh, he likes the a boy who sunbites naked in the roof next to this one. So it's the afternoon when all the all the others will figure out this, and it will be so a lot of problems about this this situation. I hope you like it. Me coño. I watched your film last last night and um the first question that came to my mind was if you ever, as the person who wrote and directed um, this film, you wrote it too, right? Or you? Oh, sorry, I didn't understand the question. <laughs> we we started well. You wrote the oh, film. Oh yes. Yes, yes, I wrote the film and with, directed. Okay. Yes, with uh, Miguel Casanova, okay. which is a friend of mine, and it's but a you wrote it together. Yes. Yeah. And did did you remember situations like we experience on this on this rooftop? Um, from your childhood too, where you yes. were like in these peer groups or you know, like your first groups of friends and you have to prove yourself and it's all about gender and mm. being a man or a boy and how what, what memories come back to your mind? Well, uh, actually I think when you make a, a movie it's in you can't help to put something of yourself in, in it and it's uh, better if you do like this because it's the only way to have a real uh, original point of view, mm -hmm. which is yours. Mm -hmm. And actually in this short film, there is a lot of my memories. It's not the reality, actually, I, I mean, it's what, what I work with Miguel, um, changing the reality f for making a good script, mm -hmm. not only because if you take reality and you put in the short in a short film or in a film, mm -hmm. it doesn't uh, work every time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, there is a lot of, mm -hmm. of child memories uh, of being a male or like you don't have the balls to do this or you yeah. don't have these um, really uh, idiot things that child <laughs> that come through. And I think this period of, of, you know, like growing up and being like in puberty and a teenager is so much about like, do I really listen to my own voice? Am I authentic or will I go with the mainstream or with the, you know, with the opinion of the leaders of groups or whatever? Mm. And like there's always the struggle between, you know, being yourself and adapting or conforming to the rest of the group, right? And how did you explain the struggle to the actors? I, because I think this is probably one of the main conflicts the protagonist has, right? Is mm. he really gonna stick to his own feelings and his, the feelings he has towards this one man, you know, on the other side of the roof? Um, or will he conform to those straight boys or whatever? And well, I think it's the the theme mm -hmm. <laughs> of the of the short film. It's uh, about uh, when the group, uh, which is retrocated like uh, something uh, negative in this short film, um, doesn't like your personality or your individuality, mm -hmm. where uh, it's, it's the conflict that you have if you choose yours, uh, your personality, or being part of the group, which is one of the most important things when you are on the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's interesting because when you grow up, uh, more and more, the people uh, that accept you is the people that becomes your friends and not uh, otherwise mm -hmm. what it happens when you are that age, like uh, 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. And how did you communicate all these conflicts and ideas to the actors? 
Well, actually, they they already knew it, what it's feel to be like mm-hmm. this because they have the they have that age. Mm-hmm. Well, they had. On but the it's difficult that we, because they are in this age and then being in this age and at the same time understanding. It's you know it's difficult sometimes. Well, I know. don't think they understand, but they felt it. They felt it. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. they they felt mm-hmm. uh, they maybe they don't understand in a rational way. Mm-hmm. They cannot put words on these feelings, but they feel it like this. Mm-hmm. I think so. Uh, sometimes uh, we didn't talk about this because what they give it in on the camera, mm-hmm. it was uh, so uh, it was good enough. Mm-hmm. To, Sorry, I so, no, per- so, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's on, a, on the one hand, it's a very universal theme because everybody grows up, everybody goes through puberty, everybody discovers their sexuality. You know, it happens in Spain, Germany, or Uganda, or whatever. Yes. But in what sense is it Spanish? The the you know this interaction, or do you think it's Spanish? I don't know. I was just thinking when I watched it, is it is there some like Spanish cultural elements in it? Or well, uh, which I uh, I mean it's in Spanish, obviously. Yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, Spanish and Catalan. It's the, Cata- it's, yeah. It's a sorry, but sorry. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. But uh, actually, we try to make a, a real Spanish short film uh, that you can feel this adding this tinea yes. uh, mm-hmm. of uh, Spanish culture. Are also Catalan, and if we if we put it um, bigger, it's uh, Mediterranean, mm-hmm. um, Mediterranean culture, like the like the male sort of like identity. Yes, kind of like the identity of male mm-hmm. of uh, having balls to do this, mm-hmm. uh, which is a real Spanish thing, <laughs> <laughs> and the sun, the um, these peripheric neighborhoods, mm-hmm. um, the architecture in Spain, which mm-hmm. uh, it's also to outside that mm-hmm. you can see the lives on the other mm, of the, your neighbors mm-hmm. in that, that lives mm-hmm. nearby uh, and this summer with this heat with all the sweat mm-hmm. uh, we try to make this and this is part of the I think uh, I don't know it, mm-hmm. I answered your question no, no, you, yeah but, but it's this. so that's like the, the 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 climate and also the well I thought this the, what kind of neighborhood is it it's like it seems like a, it's a um, housing complex or like where a lot of families live and well actually it's a okay. um, peripheric neighborhood uh, okay. mm-hmm. nearby Barcelona and it's a really popular neighborhood mm-hmm. uh, kind of poor actually mm-hmm. and uh, well I, I, I thought that this story mm-hmm. um, could happen on this place mm-hmm. or you can believe more this story if it happens to this place and not in another one mm-hmm. like I don't know uh, of course it can happen in a rich neighborhood but in this na- neighborhood uh, for me it makes more sense mm-hmm. um, wh- how like how is it these days for like a gay boy to be socialized in Spanish culture I also have the stereotype that in Barcelona, at least, it's. A, we were just talking to an Italian director, and she was saying, you know, it's so horrible in Italy, you know, the si- political situation and the church and everything. And then we also talked about Spain, where it's the, you know, at least I don't. I'm, I've only been there twice, but it seems it's very different. It's more open, you know, the, this entire marriage thing. Hmm. You can like it or not, is possible. But how do you think like a young gay boy feels these days? And I guess class plays a role, whether you come from like what background you come from, but. Well, actually, um, I'm from Catalonia, uh, and there I think it's uh, one of the best places to, to, to be in this situation because they are more open than mm. I don't think I don't know the rest of the, the Spain, but I think it's uh, especially Barcelona. Like which the is, north uh, is different, like it's more different, or like the I don't I don't know it okay. uh, because I I yeah. grow in, yeah. in yeah. Barcelona, but actually, uh, in Catalonia is uh, really open to uh, to come out of the closet. I I think it's. Uh, of course, there's always problems. Uh, anybody um, open the champagne when you, you say, "Hey, I'm gay." No, anybody makes a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, actually, well, yes. Sometimes people <laughs> yes, do. Sometimes, I sometimes like you can make a party, of course. <laughs> but uh, in Catalonia, it's I think it's uh, it's well open, and in the big cities, it's starting to, to to be well. I don't know why. Of course, um, when you are young. For example, like, like the story image, in the yeah. short films, uh, you can have some troubles or some problems or uh, some identity problems with the group, with the leaders. But at the end, uh, I don't think I, I, I think it's the best places to be. Yeah. And your film shows that too, because it has a, you know usually often these like short gay 
sort of like coming of age movies, they show the struggle and then the ending might be a little bit ambiguous, but yours is very direct. I feel like he sort of like um, shows his real self and mm. tells the other people to fuck off, basically. Yes, um, true, yes. Why, yeah, why did you choose to be so direct? Uh, anyway. Well, uh, actually it was not uh, about what I feel about uh, coming out of the closet, mm. but I wanted to, to make a, a short film, autoconclusive short film, not being ambiguous or in the end. Uh, I want to tell these stories about this boy, about this afternoon, mm -hmm. about this group of friends mm. who ends like this, mm -hmm. uh, who ends in a way that you cannot um, think about. You can, oh, oh, of course, figure out what's happened next, mm -hmm. but it's not that uh, I leave the, the, the spectators. Mm -hmm. um, the, okay, okay. The, they don't need to figure out what happened next if they don't want. It's okay. like a story that I tell, mm -hmm. if you like it, okay? If mm -hmm. you don't like it, so. <laughs> What did you learn? Well, like, was it was it your probably wasn't your first film, but like, what did you? Learn? No, yes, actually, it was. Well, I, I made of course several exercises mm -hmm. in my school cinema in my cinema school, mm -hmm. but uh, it's kind of my first uh, big short film, short film with uh, a budget a with a, a good team. Okay. And it was what did you learn? Like, what, what lessons did you learn? Well, I can I can write several books about what I learned okay. <laughs> about okay. that that short film, but actually, it was. What I learned, maybe, is it's a short film about a group uh, in a negative group who ruin, ruins the individuality of one member of the of the group. Mm -hmm. And actually, we, when we were making that movie, we were a really coordinated group, and I feel really good on mm -hmm. that group. So I maybe I learned that what I tell in the in the short film, that the group it's not always good. Mm -hmm. What I learned okay. is that the the group sometimes is really good, okay, like in, yeah. in my short film. In the film. end, yeah, yes. The end. So it's maybe the things that I learned. Cool. Thank you very much.